Hi, welcome back. Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera uh, to all my students. So, kita akan sambung uh, continue our subject today with a uh, new topic which is on AC bridge. So, this is basically the overall view of the type of bridge circuit that you're going to see today. So, for the next few lessons, we are going to cover on Maxwell bridge and uh, Hay bridge, Sharing bridge and Wind bridge. Okay, let's talk about uh, introduction to a general AC bridge. So basically, AC bridges are used to measure inductance and capacitance, as well as you can also measure resistance. Eh? So all the AC bridges are based on the Wheatstone bridge, as you can see from the graphic on your right here. Okay, so okay, so basically, in AC bridge, the bridge circuit consists of four impedances. And a C voltage source, as you can see, one, two, three, and four impedances, one AC voltage source, and an and a null detector here. Okay, all the connections are pretty much the same as like a Wheatstone bridge. So the impedance can either be pure resistance or a complex impedance, which basically, basically many includes inductor and capacitor. Okay, other than measurement of unknown impedance, AC bridges are also commonly used for shifting phases and. Uh, so let's talk about more information on what is AC bridge. So basically, the working principle of AC bridge is pretty much the same as DC bridge circuit. Okay, as you can see here, um, on top here, this is a DC bridge, piston bridge, and this is an AC bridge. As you can see, the, the circuit are pretty much similar to each other, except for now we have an impedances replaced by uh, AC, and then you have a voltage source here. So basically, when we talk about the working principle, basically the balance ratio in impedances will result in a balanced condition as indicated by the null detector. So this null detector will detect whether the circuit is balanced or not. So the only difference between AC bridge and DC bridge are as follows. The first one, uh, the least AC bridge uses, of course, an AC supply source to provide the power for the network with a constant frequency. Okay? And it consists of four impedances instead of only resistances and AC null detector is used instead of double meter to indicate balance bridge and AC bridge is also capable to measure unknown impedance instead of unknown resistance and as we, as we discussed before at balance condition the unknown impedance can be calculated as follows okay. so Z1 multiplied by, by Z4 Z is 1 multiplied by the opposite impedances equals to Z2 multiplied by the Z3, so pretty much like the Wheatstone, but replaced by the impedance. So, in summary, these are the differences between DC bridge and AC bridge. Okay, so the main component of uh, basically uh, this is all the difference in terms of main component. This is basically the formula, remember, for the balance condition for to finding resistance instead of resistance. But now for AC bridge, you have impedances. And this is what it's used for. For, for example, for DC bridge, uh, it's used to only measure resistance. But for AC bridge, it can measure inductance, resistance, capacitance, eh? and it can also be used for phase shifting. Okay, so uh, I think some of you might not um, <laughs> been um, uh, know about what is the impedances. So we're going to talk a little bit um, about what is the impedance. Okay, uh, for your information, I also put up some uh, reference video lecture on impedances in Newland, so please check them out also. So basically, uh, as you can see, uh, th there's a difference between DC circuit and AC circuit. So we talk about, like, for example, the basic component for DC circuit, basically you have a DC power supply and resistor. Okay? But for AC circuit, you can have a power supply, you, of course you have a resistor, but in addition to that, you will maybe have some inductor and capacitor. Okay. So in terms of frequency, so for DC circuit, there's no frequency since the voltage and current supply are a constant value. But in an AC circuit, AC stands for alternating current, you will have a voltage and current, also impedance, will also depend on the value of the frequency. And the frequency are divided into two. Firstly, it's omega, we call it basically it's radial frequency and the unit is radian per second. And the linear frequency F uh, is measured in hertz uh, or cycle per second. And the relationship between omega and uh, the frequency is basically omega is equal to 2 pi F. You can 
uh, transform back and forth between uh, radian per second to hertz using this formula. Okay, so what we call a unit. So the unit for uh, in DC circuit or DC bridge is basically using only since we are using only resistance, it only involves real numbers. Okay, and the unit is ohm. Okay? But in AC bridge or AC circuit, you're going to have basically three type of impedances. So it depends on what component is on the bridge. So if you have a resistor, we call it Z of R or resistive impedance, and Z of L if you have an inductor, inductive impedance. And we call it, if you have a capacitor, then we're going to call it Z of C. This is also what we call capacitive impedance. And all the three components have the same unit, which is ohm. Okay? And on top of that, the calculation will involve complex numbers. What I mean by complex numbers is basically, you're going to have, okay, let's take a look at the next table here. Okay. For resistance, um, it's just the value of impedance for resistance is just the R, the resistance. For example, 100 kilo ohm, then the resistance are 100 kilo, kilo ohm. But for inductance and capacitance, there is basically an, an additional uh, uh, variable that you have to include. Okay, for inductor, so if you have, an, for example, an L value here, for example, 1 millihenry or 100 millihenry, then you have to multiply by this called J omega. J is basically an imaginary parameter, and omega is what you have seen before, the frequency up here. Okay, So J omega L, and the unit is ohm, is basically the value for the um, inductor. And the capacitor is just 1 over J omega C. C is basically here, it's a, the capacitor value in farad, 100 microfarad, 0 0.1 farad, whatever the value is. And uh, finally, well, the calculation for Ohm's law, for example, if you want to find the, volt, the current and voltage relationship for the DC circuit is just V equals IR, but if you have impedances, then it's not only IR, but you have V equals to IZ. Z is the impedances. And this is basically a complex number. It's not just a real number. Eh? So, um, impedance can be connected in series and parallel, okay, as you can see. Uh, let's say I click up only how to, to calculate series and parallel impedances. So let's say you have two impedances, Z1 and Z2. These impedances can be resistance, RLC, or maybe inductors and capacitance only, or resistors and the, uh, inductors only, whatever combination between the three. Okay. So series combination will result in a sum of impedance elements. Okay. Impedance combined in series will combine in the same fashion as resistors in series. All right. So for example here, if you have, you want, if you want to calculate the total impedance for these two, Z1 and Z2, it's just a normal addition of all the impedance connected in series, just like connecting series resistor. Okay, we're going to see one example of this. And then parallel connected impedance, let's say here you have a connected impedance connected in parallel, Z1, Z2, and how many impedance connected, doesn't matter. So impedance combined in parallel will combine in the same fashion as resistor in parallel. So, okay. So the formula for in impedance in parallel is just one over the equivalent resist impedance divided by one over the first branch of the parallel impedance plus one over second branch and so on and so forth. Okay. So let's take a look at a very short example here. If you look at this circuit here, you have a combination of series and parallel impedances. Okay. Now you have uh, <coughs> in this branch here you have 0 0.2 Henry inductor and 8 ohms in series, and you have these two um, resistor and capacitor in series, okay, and you have these two combined together becomes become parallel uh, equivalent, and these two combined together with two millifarad is in series. So you can basically write the total impedance is just the two millifarad impedance uh, capacitor here plus in series with this 3 ohm plus 10 millifarad in, in series, in parallel with 8 ohm and 0.2 Henry a combination in series. Okay, <coughs> so if you uh, crunch that number, <coughs> you will get this equation here. Okay, so make sure that okay for this, uh, you if you want to calculate by hand manually, go ahead and uh, knock yourself out. But I would uh, rather uh, advise you uh, on finding how to use your scientific calculator to solve the complex number. Doesn't have, don't have to bother to do all this lengthy calculation to find the, the right answer. I wish if you can use the calculator then use it and, um, and go ahead and simplify a lot of work. Okay. 
Okay, so there are four types of bridges that we're going to talk about. So Maxwell Bridge, Hayes Bridge, Sharing Bridge, and Williams Bridge. And these are all the summary of what the topology of all these bridges looks like. And we're going to go through this, this bridge one at a time. And uh, we'll see you in the next class, inshallah. Okay, I'll see you again. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum.